The goal of this lesson is to present the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups, which completely classifies all finite abelian groups by their isomorphism type. But before we present this theorem, we need to discuss direct products of groups. The direct product G1 cross G2 cross Gn of groups G1 through Gn is the set of n tuples of the form g1 comma g2 comma all the way to gn where each of the little gi's is an element of group gi And the operation on this group is defined component-wise so if you have two of these n tuples g1 g2 out to gn times h1 comma h2 all the way out to hn then the operations are done on each component and we just apply the operation for group g1 in the first component and the operation for g2 in the second component and so on and so forth so we're going to write these arbitrary groups multiplicatively we would just write this as g1 times h1 g2 times h2 and so on out to gn times hn but it's understood that the operation for each group is applied in each individual component so we'll see that the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups deals with direct products so let's give a few facts about direct products first if all of these groups are finite groups, G1, G2, out to Gn, if they're all finite groups, then their direct product is also a group. And the order of the group is order of G1 times the order of G2 times the order of all the other groups together. This follows from the fact that each, each of the G's are groups and all the operations are done component-wise. So we have associativity, inverses, identities, so the identity of the, of the direct product would just be the n tuple where they have the identity in each individual component. And then it's clear to see that the order is given by this expression just by looking at all the different possibilities for n tuples of this type. A second fact, if you have an element of this direct product, so let's look at g1, g2, out to Gn, which is an element of this direct product of these groups, then the order of this element would be the least common multiple of the orders of the individual components. 
of the least common multiple of the order of G1, the order of G2, and so on out, out to the order of Gn. So again, this is this is clear because this will be the smallest integer such that the, every component raised to that exponent would equal the identity. So this has to be the order of this n-tuple. And a third fact, when we write a direct product of groups, it doesn't really matter what order we write these factors because if we change the order of the factors, the direct product is still isomorphic to any other direct product with the factors rearranged. So if the factors of a direct product are rearranged, the resulting direct product is isomorphic to the original one. Now I'm going to recall some fact about cyclic groups. Recall that for a positive integer n, the set denoted by z sub n is the cyclic group of order n written multiplicatively. So that is Zn is the set one a a squared all the way out to a sub n minus one where a is some generator of this set. So this is a cyclic group generated by a. So we call the cyclic group of order n z sub n. So this arbitrary cyclic group is written multiplicatively. And so when you multiply two elements of the of Zn, you really are just adding the exponents. And we saw that this shows that Zn is actually isomorphic to the set of integers mod n. So the set Zn is isomorphic to the set of integers mod n where this set is actually written additively the operation is addition mod n so these two sets are isomorphic so in the statement of the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups i will use the symbols for the cyclic group of order n anytime you see a zn we could also re replace that with an isomorphic copy of the integers mod n so now we'll state the main result and although we're not going to give a proof at this time we'll look at some examples of this theorem so the fundamental theorem of finite billion groups says that every finite abelian group is isomorphic to a direct product
of cyclic groups whose orders are prime powers. That is a prime number raised to a positive integer. So to be more precise, if G is a finite abelian group, then G is isomorphic to a direct product of cyclic groups of prime powers. So we would have this form z sub p1 to the n1 cross z sub p2 to the n2 all the way to z sub pk to the nk. So it's an important note that these primes do not necessarily have to be distinct. So this theorem completely classifies every finite abelian group according to its isomorphism class. Writing G as one of these direct product forms is called identifying the isomorphic class of G. And so given the fact that G is a finite abelian group and given the order, we can determine all the different possibilities for the isomorphism class of G. So now let's use this fundamental theorem to classify all abelian groups of order p to the n for some prime p. So we'll give another theorem without actually giving the proof, but it is true that the number of non-isomorphic abelian groups of order p to the n again we're for a prime p equals the number of partitions of n. A partition is, is a set of positive integers whose sum equals n. So if we can break up n into a sum of positive integers, then that partition defines one possible isomorphism class of an abelian group of order p to the n. So let n be a positive integer. If we can partition n, so we can write n as n1 plus n2 all the way to nk, some positive integers n1 n2 up to nk so in other words we have a partition of n then the following direct product
is an abelian group of order p to the n. We see from the earlier fact, if you multiply the orders of the individual factors, you will get p to the n. And so we see that given any partition of n, we can produce an abelian group. And it's actually true that each partition actually defines a distinct isomorphism class of this abelian group of this order. So let's look at an example when n is very small. If G is a group of order P to the N, so if the order of the group is P, so we have um, a P group, then there's only one partition of the exponent one. So there's only one isomorphism class of the abelian group of order P. So we're gonna list the isomorphism class or isomorphism type. So for this partition, we just have the cyclic group of order P. So any group of order P will actually be an abelian group with isomorphism class ZP. Now, if I had a group of order P squared for any prime P, then there's actually two partitions of the exponent two. So when we have the partition two, this would give the isomorphism class Z sub P squared. And we can also partition two as one plus one. This would give us ZP cross ZP, so the direct product of ZP and ZP. So let's continue. So when I have a group of order P cubed, there's actually three partitions of the exponent three. We have the integer three, we have the two plus one, and one plus one plus one. So this produces three different isomorphism classes the cyclic group of order p cubed, the cyclic group of order p squared times the cyclic group of order p, and the cyclic group zp cross zp cross zp. So these are the three possible isomorphism classes for any group of order p cubed, for any prime p. When we do this process, it's interesting to note that the number of isomorphism classes is not dependent on the prime. It's only dependent on the exponent n when we have an, a group of the order p to the n. So let's give one more example when the exponent is four. Let's look at the different possible isomorphism classes for a group of order p to the fourth. There's actually five partitions of the number four, four, three plus one, two plus two, two plus one plus one, and one plus one plus one plus one. So again, we noted earlier that it doesn't matter what order the factors in the direct product occur in, it still would define the same isomorphism class. So we're gonna write all of our partitions in decreasing order. So these five Partitions of the number four give us five isomorphism classes of the abelian group of order p to the fourth. We have z sub p to the fourth, z sub p cubed cross z sub p, z sub p squared cross z p squared, z p squared cross z p cross z p, and then finally, ZP times itself 
four times. So the idea is that any group of order p to the fourth for any prime p would be isomorphic to one of these five isomorphism classes. Now let's look at a couple more facts about direct products that helps us identify the isomorphism class of abelian groups. So let M and N be positive integers. And the first fact, the cyclic group of order M cross the cyclic group of order N this direct product is isomorphic to the cyclic group of order m times n if and only if m and n are relatively prime. So the GCD of m and n equals 1. So for example, the cyclic group of order 2 times the cyclic group of order 3 would be isomorphic to the cyclic group of order 6. Second fact, if I can factor n into distinct primes, so if I can write n as some prime p1 to the n1, a distinct prime p2 to the n2, all the way out to pk to the nk, where PIs are distinct primes. And the cyclic group of order N is isomorphic to the cyclic group Z sub P1 to the N1 cross Z sub P2 to the N2 all the way out to z sub p k to the n k. So we can write the cyclic group of order n as the following direct product, and then we saw how each one of these factors in the direct product can be broken down into uh, smaller isomorphism classes. So for example, we know that 30 is the product of distinct primes 2, 3, and 5. So if you ever had a cyclic group of order 30 in a direct product, it would be isomorphic to the direct product of the cyclic group of order 2 with the cyclic group of order 3 and the cyclic group of order 5. So further, if you had if you're trying to identify the isomorphism class for Z30 cross Z30, we can use the fact that Z30 is isomorphic to this direct product. And then as we showed, the rearranging of the factors does not affect the isomorphism class. So we could also write this as isomorphic to this direct product, cyclic group order 2, cross the cyclic group of order 2, cross the cyclic group of order 3, order 3, order 5, and order 5. So this would be one way to write an isomorphism class of Z30 cross Z30 by breaking it down into all the way down to prime factors. So now we will conclude by looking at a table of isomorphism classes for groups of small order. And we're not going to be limited to only abelian groups. So let's look at the list of all finite groups of order 15 or less. So here we have in this table of groups of small orders, 
We're looking down the left column. They see that this is the table containing the groups of order 15 or less. And the second column, we have the number of isomorphism types. So for example, there's only one isomorphism class of groups of order one, two, and three. And these are the abelian groups Z1, Z2, and Z3. And if we look on the right, far right column, we have a list of non-abelian groups. And so we see that the smallest non-abelian group is actually S3. And we see some familiar non-abelian groups like the dihedral group D8 and the quaternions Q8 in the row of groups of order eight. And we see when we're looking at a prime power like four, four being two squared, the exponent has two partitions, two and one plus one. So we have these two isomorphism classes, Z sub four and Z2 cross Z2. Similarly, if we look at the row of order nine, we see there's two isomorphism classes, again, corresponding to the two partitions of the exponent two. And eight is two cubed. So the, the integer three has three partitions. Hence, we have three different isomorphism classes of abelian groups. And then we have the two non-abelian groups, D8 and Q8, giving us five isomorphism classes for groups of order eight.